the lives of true freedom fighters who gave their all and their lives in many cases for black liberation, freedom, radical resistance, and mass consciousness. In the words of Shaka at Thinin, uh, of the Black August Organizing Committee, who was one of the, actually the original people who founded uh, Black August in 1979. Each year, officially since 1979, we have used the month of August to focus on the oppressive treatment of our brothers and sisters. Disappeared inside the state-run gulags and concentration camps, America calls prisons. It is during this time that we concentrate our efforts to free our mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, uncles, aunts, and all other captive family and friends who have been held in isolation for decades after decade beyond their original sentence. Many of these individuals are held in the sensory deprivation and mind control units called security housing units or the SHU program. Even, with, even without the most basic of human rights. August is also a month that many important events in relation to the black liberation struggle have taken place throughout the years. Examples include, but are not limited to, the March on Washington, which took place on August 23rd, 1963. The Nat Turner Slave Rebellion, which took place on August 1831. The racist Philadelphia Police Department raids on the headquarters of MOVE activists on August 8th, 1978, which gave birth to the MOVE 9. And just to give a few examples. August is undeniably an important month in the liberation struggle for black people. However, it is very important, I guess, I give context as to where Black Friday exactly originated from and why. It started as a desire to liberate victims of this racist United States penal system. It started out with a loving brother wanting to free his older brother from a hell that he should have never been in. It started with $70. <laughs> yeah, Black August was started over something as seemingly trivial as $70. And do you want to know what the worst part is? Black August almost never happened. If this country's criminal justice system wasn't such a product and tool of white supremacy, George Washington would have never been in San Quentin. Whoever it was that really stole the $70 from a California gas station also remained a free man. But George Washington was a black man. And so I guess that was enough of the racist power structure of the US. Before he was assassinated by a racist correction officer with a gunshot wound to the head, George had just completed a book called titled Soledad Brother, giving his own personal account of his arrest, imprisonment, political views, and how he became a Marxist-Leninist while he was incarcerated, among other topics. George was born on Tuesday, September 23rd, 1941. He would have been 75 today, going on 76 this September 23rd. Freedom shouldn't be a foreign concept for anyone but for black people in the United States and wherever else in the world where we are victims of white imperialism, colonialism, and racism. Freedom, true freedom, is non-existent. When people have basic rights, such as personal, individual freedom, infringed upon them, when we are shot and killed just for being black, it's only so much that a human can bear. These feelings of helplessness, oppression, anger at this racist system, whether it be the capitalist system, the racist criminal justice system, the racist police system who killed black people with impunity, or the whole damn system hell. These things are exactly what led to Jonathan Jackson trying to free his brother. And George Jackson's own assassination at the hands of prison guards in San Quentin was the breaking point for revolutionary inmates in Attica Correctional Facility right here in New York State, in Attica. Two weeks after brother George's murder, Around 1,000 of the 2,200 prisoners in Attica at the time took arms and took over the prison in an attempt to receive better living conditions while they're being incarcerated. <laughs> clean water, working sanitary toilets, clean sleeping conditions. These inmates at Attica and other prisons didn't have any of these things. And these are the most basic human needs. And conditions in prisons and jail today in 2017 have not changed one bit. The fact that these needs were not met 
And not only that, but not one even attempted to be rectified is proof of the inherent hate and brutality of white supremacy. The Attica prisoners thus responded to this brutality with the brutality of their own, slaughtering ten racist pigs and gods who made their lives completely unbearable while they were imprisoned. It wasn't an easy struggle. In the end, 33 prisoners had their lives taken by the same bigoted corrections officers and pigs that they their, made their lives a living literal hell while they were still alive. The Attica Rebellion is a direct result of white supremacy. The Attica prisoners had enough of it. They won what the white imperialist power structure in this country made sure no black person ever gets. Freedom to live. Liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and the only way is to get these things isn't by asking for them. No. <laughs> if you could have just asked to stop being killed, to stop being incarcerated, to stop being blackballed out of jobs. If you could have just asked for a political system, an economical system that benefits all people and not just white people, we could have just did that. We would have did that. In fact, many have already tried to ask peacefully to stop killing us for equal treatment. Those people ended up getting killed, nine times out of ten. White supremacy isn't reasonable, and it can't be reasoned with. I would have better luck convincing a brick wall to grow legs and jump off of a cliff than convincing white supremacy to stop killing black people. Black August is a time to commemorate these fallen black revolutionary, among others. It's also a time to promote and bring about unity among black prisoners, to educate and honor our people's continued resistance to oppression. Colonialism and slavery. Today, on the very last day of this black August, in the belly of the beast, what us workers world revolutionaries call the United States, as it is the largest bastion of imperialism in the, on the entire planet. In the consciousness of solidarity, we continue to honor the lives of the black revolutionaries of the past, as well as the black revolutionaries of today. What we saw in Durham, North Carolina on August 16th of this year, our very own workers' world comrades knocked down with impunity one of the biggest symbols of white hate, white supremacy, and white imperialism. The statue of Robert E. Lee came tumbling down, just like this capitalist system will also do in the future. However, as a result of this much needed action and bravery for, from our comrades and friends, Seven of them are now facing felony charges for knocking down the statue of a bastard who would rather commit treason than to give up his right to enslave black people. If anyone needs proof that white supremacy still exists in the United States, that is it. Our comrades in Durham are today's revolutionary heroes, among others, and we stand by them and all black revolutionaries this black August. We stand by those who bravely fought against the racist Nazi scum in Charlottesville, Virginia this black August on the 12th. 2017 offered absolutely no shortage of reminders as to why Black August even exists in the first place. Let us take heed to the wise words of George Jackson. Settle your quarrels. Come together. Understand the reality of our situation. Understand that fascism is already here. That people are dying who could be saved. From George Jackson taken from his book, The Solidad Brother. Brother George's quote exemplifies what Black August is about. Black unity, black empowerment, black brotherhood and sisterhood, and black history. As we never forget who came before us who laid down their lives so that I, as a black man, for instance, can live in the United States without being killed or deprived of basic human needs because of my African ancestry. Revolutionaries of today will continue to do the same for the coming black generation knowing that one day they will live free of oppression. This is a struggle that exemplifies why white supremacy, colonialism, imperialism, and capitalism must all be abolished, along with the police, military, and other apparatus, apparatuses of the state that uphold our oppression. It won't be today, and it won't be tomorrow, but the day will come when re revolution is here, and the blood of the upholders of white supremacy will be flowing like river streams along these streets. Thank you.